Good evening. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Uh, I struggled with the title of my lesson for a while, uh, but the idea behind it I came up with months ago. Um, so the title of my lesson that I've decided on is, This World is Not My Home. Now they say that there's no place like home, and it's often said that home is where the heart is. So it's no wonder that we often long to come home, either be from when we vacation or when we go for around the holidays from when our family's around. We always long to go back to where we know what's familiar. Sometimes home can be as simple as where we live. When we come home from work to the much needed rest, we often find great joy in going home to a place of joy and rest, wherever that may be. Now we have homes here on this earth, buildings made of wood or of stone, dwellings for a physical body. But both this body and the dwellings of this world will one day pass away. So, so much has been written by philosophers and poets of this world of what waits us after this life. The mystery of what is beyond death but we as Christians have a faith and a promise that a new and better world awaits us after this life. And so the song goes, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I just can't feel at home in this world anymore. But what can be said about this world, our temporary home? We can see very early in scriptures that life in this world will have its struggles. In Genesis, we see that God created this amazing place, this utopia that had all that we needed to survive. In fact, even flourish. But when sin entered the world, that changed everything. We see that when sin entered the world, that we'd have to work hard to make a living. That because sin, man will have to work the ground and when did we have pain and childbearing? It's because of this sin that entered into the world, because of Adam and Eve, that separated us from God. But God, being a loving God, knew that there was still hope for his creation. So early on in the, in the, the world, sacrifices were offered to make an atonement for sin. For as much joy we have in bringing life in this world and seeing new babies and the miracle of life, there's just as so much pain in having to say goodbye to a loved one that has passed from this life. And so goes the circle of life. From the very beginning of the scriptures, we see that separation from God, because of sin, can and does cause us pain. You see the Israelites suffered over and over due to their disobedience to God going back and forth in obedience and disobedience with God. Wandering from captivity in Egypt to the desert, from foreign lands conquering them and taking them away. It can be safe to assume that God has the power to reward those who serve him and to punish those who turn their backs on him, both as individuals and as a nation. And we see even in the time of Jesus, the struggles of this life and the power of God to heal us from our suffering. And though death is part of this life, we who believe have faith in who has conquered death. But some of the pain we face in this life will benefit us in the next life. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8, Paul writes, encouraging Timothy not to be ashamed, but to testify about the Lord or to be ashamed of even him, even though he was in prison because of the gospel. See, he caused Timothy and future Christians to join in his suffering for the gospel. For by the power of God, he has saved us and called us to a holy life, and he's given us purpose in grace, which is given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. And then continuing in verse 12, he continues to write about the suffering that we face in this life. And it's a beautiful basis for a beautiful song. 
For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. You see, for all the pain and suffering we have in this world, there is a greater home waiting for us in heaven. In John 14, Jesus tells us, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. For those of us that believe, we can have faith that when we leave this world and say goodbye to our earthly home, a more wonderful home will await us in heaven. For it is written in Revelations 21.4 that God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more death. There will be no more pain for this world was as it was before the judgment will have passed away. You see, we often see death as the end, but really it's just the beginning of a new chapter where we get to live a more blessed life. With this world and our frail bodies comes sickness and pain. In this life we are subject to diseases and cancer, to injuries from everything like car accidents, to just slipping and falling on the ice. In this world we are told will always be wars and rumors of wars, but in heaven there will only be peace and joy. There will be no more darkness in our home in heaven, but will be lit by the very light of God. You see, it will be a most awe-inspiring place. Streets of gold, walls lined with jewels. The best things you can imagine, heaven will be even better. You see, we'll no longer be under the power of sin, but we'll serve God, and all our actions will be out of love for God. You see, so this world is not our home. Jesus is preparing us a home in heaven. And it's because of sin that separates us not only from God, but also from our, reaching, our goal of reaching home in heaven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John 14.6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then in Acts 2, 38 through 40, it is written, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and your children, and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this first generation. You see, we are called to be set apart from this world, to make ourselves holy, to continually seek his favor and to purify ourselves. And we have this hope as Christians of this great reward in heaven, but often we get discouraged by the life, this life, and the struggles we face. But you see, God has promised us not to give us any more than we can handle. And that if we seek him and trust in him, then he'll find us a way out. In Matthew 11, 28, Jesus says, Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, though this life may have its struggles, its trials and tribulations, we have someone willing to bear it all for us. We often worry about what tomorrow will bring. But God's creation has everything it needs to survive. And how much more important are we in his eyes? So even though we suffer in this life, know that God still loves us. And that sin separates us from the love that God has for us. And the only way to separate uh, or to bring us back to God is to repent and be baptized. You see, this world is not our home. 
We are just a passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon us from heaven's open door. And we can't feel home in this world anymore. You see, we who believe look forward to going back home. Back to our creator, our heavenly father, and to be in our eternal resting place with Jesus, his son. And as another song says, Jesus is calling us, each and every one of us home. He's calling for you and for me. He's watching and waiting for us to come home. So he, those who are weary, come home. Because Jesus is calling, sinner, come home. See, we have an opportunity to get our life right in the eyes of God. To lay down the burdens of this life and to give our life back to God's control. To allow him to guide us back home. It's really easy, although we struggle with it sometimes. All we have to do is give our life over to God, and he'll take care of the rest. Now, if you have any troubles that are bothering you tonight, or maybe someone that you know, we have this opportunity where you can come forward and let those troubles be known to others and to God. So we have this unique opportunity to let prayer give up our worries, our burdens, our troubles to God. All we have to do is be able to let go of it ourselves. So tonight as we come together before enjoy fellowship in the, in the mill waiting for us, let us remember that this world might have its troubles, but we have a family and a home. Here, we also have a greater home waiting for us in heaven. Thank you.